Today we're going to talk about inductive reasoning. So far, what sort of reasoning have we been using? Very good. When when we were, yeah when we're doing the uh, two column proofs especially right, we use the deductive reasoning which means what you you yeah what does it mean? Right, you logically, uh, uh, you put things in logical sequence. You guys remember that? Okay. So, thank you. So, get anyone to get anyone want anyone? Okay, here. Let me tell you. Here, can somebody read this for us? Throughout these, raise your hand. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, D this uh, inductive reasoning is used in science and everyday life. So, anyone want to guess what this inductive reasoning might be? How do you think it would be different than the deductive reasoning that we've been doing, which is doing things in logical sequence? Tony? Well, if you see like a pattern, you're gonna have a follow-up. Exactly, that's the idea. Very good. So, uh, can somebody read this example one for us? Uh, after, how about? Go ahead, uh, Andrew. After picking marigolds for the first time, Connie began to sleep. She also began sleeping the next four times she was near marigolds. Based on this past experience, Connie reasons inductively that she's alive. <laughs> yeah, so how is this decision made? It's through? Yes, sir. Uh, right. Kevin? Educated, yes. Uh, uh, right, so they're using inductive reasoning in this case. So this is an example of inductive reasoning. So how are they basing this uh, conclusion on? Yeah. Experience. Past experience. Do you see what I mean? Okay, anybody like baseball, Rachel? Yeah. Who likes baseball? Oh. Jed, can you read this for us? <laughs> every time? Um, every time pitch has thrown a high curveball, the slugger is not going to hit. Pitch concludes from his experience that it's not a good idea to pitch high curveballs to slugger. In coming to this conclusion, pitch has used inductive reasoning. It may be that slugger just happened to be lucky those times, but pitch is too dry to feed another high curveball. Okay, so again, what is this decision based on? Past, yeah, inductive reasoning, past experience. So inductive reasoning, you should think about as past experience and so forth. So uh, let me show you, here is what we, for inductive reasoning. Yeah, I'll give you time to write in a minute, but just wait. So here, it says, inductive reasoning, the conclusion is based on several past experience or observations. Is that okay? And look at conclusion is probably true, but is it necessarily true? No. no. Okay, does that make sense? But look at the difference. For deductive reasoning, how is the conclusion, what is conclusion based on? Anybody want to, whoops, based? Anybody want to say? Anybody know? Uh, the same people? Okay, I'll give you time to write. Just don't write it right now. I want you to think about this. Okay, if inductive reasoning is the conclusion for inductive reasoning is based on several past observations. What do you think for deductive reasoning is based on? The, I mean, the uh, conclusion for deductive reasoning is based on. Yes, Samantha? Yeah, exactly. So things that we know already know to be true, which are accepted statements like definitions, postulates, previous theorems, corollaries, and given information. Does that make sense? Conclusion based on accepted statements. Okay. You guys understand what we're saying here? So then what about then conclusion? Is it probably true for deductive reasoning or is it going to be always true? Always going to be true. If you use these uh, base, except if you use uh, these definitions, postulate, you know, these accepted statements uh, correctly. Does that make sense? That's what proofs do, right? When you prove something in two column proofs, it's going to be true, always going to be true. If you did it correctly, of course. Okay, so now I give you time to write this. Go ahead, I'll wait. Then, why don't you fill in this blank for this example one. Mary has given Jimmy a present on each of his birthdays. He reasons, blank, that she will give him a present on his next birthday. So what do you think goes in there? Yes. So fill in the blank. Okay, I'll wait. Write the whole example down. Yes. Okay, who thinks they know what to fill in there? How about Grace, what do you think? Mary has given Jimmy a gift. Okay, what do you think? Inductively. How many people wrote down inductively? Raise your hand. How many people put down something else? What'd you put? Based on past experience. Okay, good. Anybody else? 
But then if you said that, isn't that sort of inductive reasoning? Okay, so that's what I was looking for. That's fine. But if you wrote down based on past experience, that means inductively, right? Okay, is that okay? All right. Now, what I want you to do is do example two and three. Go ahead and fill in the blanks using your inductive reasoning. It's sort of easy. Um, you have 10, 20, 30. Guess what comes next? Four. Four. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't say it okay, just do it. Go ahead. And then seven, four, one, and give me the two other. When you do this, by the way, there are many ways, actually. There may be many different ways of doing it. Choose the easiest possible way, okay? If you see the easiest possible. Don't, like, make it really hard. Okay, if you see the easiest way, just do it that way. Because there may be other ways of doing it. Does that make sense? Because, you know, the other may way may be true. But uh, I'm telling you, as a little hint, just do the easiest way you see, okay? All right, so this should be pretty straightforward. This is easy. Anybody have the answer for example two? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. How about somebody that I haven't picked recently? How about uh, Brandon? Uh, 40 and 50. That's what I got. How many people put down 40 and 50? Raise your hand. Anybody have different uh, numbers that you wrote down? Because it could be that it doesn't have to be 40 and 50, it turns out. Anybody see what? Oh, uh, Josh? 10 and 20. Why 10 and 20? Oh, you think you'll be repeating? Like, okay, I guess. Okay, but, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, what other ones could you, could you think of? Grace? 50 and 80 would also work. Why? Yeah, you add the previous two numbers. That one, okay, but which one's the easiest way? 40, 40 and 50, right? So, like, if you're doing your homework and things like that, just do the easiest way, 40 and 50. But on the test, if you wrote this down, and if you could tell me that what you did and is, is correct, you'll get it right. Uh, if I ask you, yes, but most of the times I don't. Really get it. Okay, and then what about next one? 7, 4, 1, then what should I write here? Yes. Negative 2 and? How many people got negative 2 and negative 5? Okay. okay, did anybody get? That's what I got, too. Negative 2 and negative 5. What's the rule? Basically, you... Subtract three. three and then you get. Is there another way to do that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, but which? But do you see that? This, do you see that this is the easiest? But if you just put odd and even number, you don't just put random odd and even number. It's got to be some sort of rule. Okay. So my my point is, yeah, there may may, may there may be other ways of doing it, but. Choose the easiest way. Is that okay? Yes, sir. I have a question. Okay. Is negative two an even number? Is negative two an even number? The answer is anybody? Yes. 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 So negatives could be, I mean, yeah. Even, negative number could be even also. What about zero? Is zero an even number? No. Zero is an even number. Yeah. But, but, is zero a positive number or a negative number? No. It's neither. Okay. Okay. That's what you meant. Okay. Any other question? All right, good.